If you've been in the live streaming scene in the past couple of months, you may have noticed that there's a new format of content coming out that's become very popular, and it's been coined Internet Blood Sports. Well, what are Internet Blood Sports? What does that term mean, and what is the format? Well, today I'm going to explain exactly what that is and how it became so successful. Prominent blood sports entrepreneur and YouTube specialist Jean-Francois Gary P. has described internet blood sports as an innovative type of intellectual combat where every hit is permitted. You can attack people based on their personal life, but you might regret it because you might be wrong. Participants are put at the height of their intellectual capabilities in debate format. No topic or tactics are off the table. Blood sports does not respect the individuals, only the strength of their ideas and their intellect. Internet blood sports, to me, is a new format in the realm of debate, whether it's politics, religion, whatever the topic is, nothing is off the table. In the old world, the old form of debate, you have extremely harsh moderators, you have timers, you have strict topics, you have topics that are taboo that you can't talk about, whether it's for socio-cultural reasons or the threat of censorship, whatever. But blood sports is changing the scene. It, it brings the topics and the people together that the audience wants to see, and it puts two combatants in an arena where they're not subdued by timers and strict moderation. You can shout, you can scream, you may be wrong, you may make of a fool of yourself, you may make your opponent make a fool out of themselves, you may be dogpiled three on one, four on one, and if you come out victorious, it's an incredible victory for whatever your ideas may be. So in the realm of internet blood sports, you have different formats, and each individual content creator is free to make it however they see fit. There are a few rules that you generally have to follow that I've outlined before. Generally speaking, rule number one is nothing is off the table, no topic is too taboo, no tactics are too impolite, and rule number two is that it must be entertaining for the viewers. The three most prominent blood sports shows that I can think of right now that I do watch regularly are the following. Baked Alaska's channel, the Worski livestream, and Tonkasaw's Kumite, or Kumite. Each content creator has taken these two essential rules and morphed it into their own platform in which they can have these live streams. They're entertainers at their core, but at the same time, it's intellectually stimulating. For example, the Worski live show has created a space where intellectuals can come together and battle it out. But if you're looking for a bit more of a shit show, a little bit more blood, Tonkasas Kumite is a bit more hands-off approach. There's generally no moderation unless things get too insane. But generally people come in, they hit each other in the face as hard as possible, and then everyone leaves. It's a great time. It's very entertaining. And Baked Alaska is sort of in the middle between the Worski Live and the Kumite, or it's much more hands-off, but it's much more intellectually stimulating. Now that leaves the question, there are gaps that can be filled on this platform. What will you do? Can you start a show? Can you find a format that works for you and draws in viewers? But enough about the format and the people. I want to get into something that I've been thinking about recently, and that's why have blood sports taken over the mainstream? Why does the Worski show get between three and 10,000 viewers at any given time, depending on what the topic and the participants are? Why is that? Well, it's easy to think about if you look back at the past couple of years. And to really understand the success of blood sports, you have to understand memetics. Memetics is the study of information and culture based on an analogy with Darwinian evolution. Proponents describe memetics as an approach to evolutionary models of cultural information transfer. Memetics involves sidestepping the traditional concern with the truth of ideas and believes instead involving a focus on the success of the ideas and beliefs. As we all know, the success of the internet meme is a sort of evolutionary strategy for the transfer of cultural ideas and belief systems. Just how powerful are websites like 4chan and Reddit when it comes to transferring ideas into the mainstream? I mean, we've taken internet culture and we've brought it into real life. So now we get to blood sports. Why has it become so successful? 
well. It's using mimetics. It's an evolutionary strategy for these cultural ideas. It's a vessel to unload these belief systems onto people. The success of groups like the political alternative right have used this sort of evolutionary strategy to dump their ideas onto the mainstream, and it's become more and more successful as time goes on. And we can see that those who do not adopt these strategies, the skeptic community, the SJWs, their ideas fall flat, and they become the laughing stock of the internet world. Think of it like this. The term the Trump effect has a long-lasting impression on people since the 2016 election in the United States. Donald Trump and his online internet supporters used memetics, used the power of internet memes in order to live rent-free in their opponents' minds, in order to garner support. Just the usage of Pepe the Frog is such a huge cultural shift. I mean, it's in, it's in the eyes and ears of so many people nowadays. Compare the Hillary Clinton campaign to the Trump campaign, and you see this high energy meme. People are hyped up. They're excited for Trump. No one was excited for Hillary Clinton. And the same thing can be applied to internet blood sports. People are excited to see people uh, get made fun of or make fools of themselves. They're, they are excited for people to go into the public space and exchange blows and make fun of each other and use tactics that used to be immature or impolite. Internet blood sports and, and memetics are like a mind virus. The fact that they're entertaining, they're amusing, people are hyped up to see them. It implants this cultural shift inside people's minds, and then it spreads. One person sees a stream, they laugh, they have a good time, and it's also intellectually stimulating, so they tell their friend, and then that friend tells their ten friends, and then those ten friends tell their ten friends, and now all of a sudden you have a thousand extra people who want to tune in and see two intellectual heavyweights hit each other with uh, metaphorical clubs. We've known for years that comedy is a positive vessel for spreading ideas. It's a form of memetics, but blood sports is simply the next evolution. You see, from the era of the start of YouTube until about 2015, there was a stagnation of ideas where you have one group commonly referred to as the skeptic community versus another group, the SJWs or the evangelicals even when it comes to science. And they use the standard issue debate tactics. You have one YouTuber making a video about another YouTuber that made a video, and it goes back and forth. It's very dull. There's no inter real interaction with the community. Live streams really change that. You were able to interact with people. You were able to spread ideas on the spot. It was a much more effective way of spreading ideas. You have a longer time frame. You're able to get ideas live from your audience. Of course, the more brains involved, the greater chance there is that someone will have a good idea that will spark a whole new train of thought. We see this through the usage of the super chat. When someone spends a little bit of money to get their opinion read by the host, and it might be an, a fantastic question for one of the participants in the debate. And it's not just the fact that groups like the alternative right have better ideas, it's the fact that they make use of things like memetics to change culture, to shift people's belief systems, to live rent-free inside their opponents' minds. It's an effective strategy. It's an evolutionary strategy for exchanging ideas, beliefs, and culture. People have never been interested in watching C-SPAN or sitting down and reading books. It's not as engaging. I personally like those things, but most people want to see a little bit of violence. Most people want to see a little bit of blood. That's why it's called blood sports. And if you want your ideas to be successful, you have to implement memetics. You have to be able to go out there in the public space, put yourself out there, and if your ideas are good, you'll win. If your ideas are bad and you're not very intelligent, you lose. It's as simple as that. It's a natural selection. It's evolution. It's a positive way of changing our culture. My final thoughts here. Will blood sports endure the test of time? Who knows? The format can change tomorrow, that's just how the internet works. However, there will always be a better evolutionary strategy for the exchange of ideas, and we should all be very excited for this new age of debate, this new format in exchanging ideas. The only real thing that I think we need to be wary of are those who intend to leech off of the success of the memetic strategy of blood sports. Just be wary of those content creators who are fake, who are just jumping on the train for whatever reason, who are just in it to make money. They're not there to engage with their fans. They're not there to be entertainers. They're there to be parasites on the system. Well, I hope this video was an informative one. If you did learn anything, 
Leave me a like down below, subscribe if you want to see more, and thanks for listening.